Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back in to the Cross Platform Baseball League official channel here. This is the season 10 preseason roundup, a uh, little hype session we got going here. Uh, it's so great to be back here doing another broadcast with you, Dwayne. How are you doing tonight? Doing fantastic. We were sorry about the technical difficulties over there for everybody for a minute. My camera had my malfunction here in the middle, but either way, I'm just as excited as you are for another season of Cross Platform League Baseball. And we have a great show on our hands tonight, a ton of content for you guys. Uh, I hope you guys are ready to eat it up. Ten seasons. This thing is about to hit its tenth season. And you know, if, if you're maybe if you're new here and, and you're not quite familiar with what we do, these aren't short seasons either. This thing has been running over the course of uh, almost three years, if not three years. It's been really amazing uh, to be a part of it. I I haven't been a part of it all t all ten, obviously, but uh, just the time that I've spent here, it's been fantastic. And we're happy to have you all along with us uh, as we we kind of kick off season ten here. Uh, not, not with any official matches, but we will get into details about those. Uh, without further ado, though, let's start the show off tonight. We have a, a pretty big show for you tonight, and we'll start with power rankings as usual. And we're going to start with the double A. We have eight players in the double A this season. I believe only two are not rookies, so six newcomers. And uh, rounding out the list here at rank eight and seven, that's M. Coombs and Natron there at eight and seven. Yeah, a couple of newcomers here. Got to see what they have in their locker. Really no real scouting reports on these guys going forward. So like you said, six rookies in this double A. It's going to be a real crapshoot to see who comes out on top, I think. And so we'll move up into that little middle mid-tier there for the double A. And, but yeah, like you said, there's going to be tons of room for movement as we see Ben Mc19, Snowbird, and Yellow Bunting there. You can see tied for third place. And we'll, we'll see you know how it shapes up up that list. But uh, this is the mid-tier here, but like we saw in the AA last season, it is it, movement. It goes comes very quickly throughout the season. Yeah, indeed it does. With uh, you know so few games, too, a, a bad stretch against one or two teams that you may or may not expect uh, is really going to change things up for you as far as the season goes, as far as seedings go, going into the playoffs. So it's going to be important to, to you know get your wins in the AA, especially I think, and in these three, four, or th excuse me, four, five, and six teams. Are going to be you know right in that dog fight and then moving on into the top of the list here we mentioned there was a tie there at three and that's sonco 87 there and then one and two are the two uh double a players returning diesel the favorite and then the von asen winner cougar uh, I, you could say the second favorite it should be a great battle when those two match up yeah absolutely and we got uh ps4 representation too from sonco as well so one of the only if not the only ps4 player in the current league so we'll see how Sonco does in that uh, double A. Going to be a lot of eyes on that um, that platform for him. And then, like you said, yeah, just going to be a crapshoot between these two, D Cell and Cougar. They're both really, really strong double A veterans already. Either one of them is going to want to come out on top after Burr really kind of swept through the thing last season. And I think they're going to be pretty evenly matched. There's no calling it right now. Yeah, you mentioned PS4 there for Sonco. Shout out Nintendo Switch as well uh, for Diesel there, for sure. one of the returning members. All right, that's your double A field. It's going to be exciting. We'll get into triple A now. Rounding out here at the list is Joe BJ. There was questions on whether or not he would come back after what was frankly a miserable season in season nine. He is back. He's a veteran of uh, the XBL and he's ready. Yeah, for sure. We're going to see what he can do. Like you can, as you can see, there are two and twenty-six uh, in season nine. So really, really tough season for Job. Uh, we're going to want to see him bounce back. You know, I think he's got it in him to to get a few more wins. You know, back up into that maybe nine, ten range of one of those fourteen, fifteen seeds instead of being you know dead last. He's had playoff upsets in the XPL in his locker in the past. So just don't put it past him to to make some noise. Absolutely. We we definitely saw more potential than that in season eight, so uh, it would it wouldn't surprise me that you know he's going to improve on his season nine record. Moving on to 18, 17, and sixteen, we've got Zlatanimal uh, down there, Tam Danitz, a returning member, and Risenfall, a double A graduate. Uh, real quick, shout out to that that logo there in the middle from Tam. I love that. Yeah, the Hudson Softies logo definitely going to be high up there in the logo contest. But right now, number seventeen in the power rankings of the Triple A. Tam's going to be looking to make some noise. He was up in, I think, the 13-14 seeding range. right. So he's ranked pretty appropriately. Haven't seen a lot of scrim action from him. But uh, he's sandwiched between a newcomer, like you said, and Zlatanimal, who looked really good in that uh, new players tournament. 
And then the Plum Island Piranhas, Rise of Paul, came out of double A looking hot. You can see 11 and 3 there, semi finalist in the double A, just couldn't quite get it done against Tezzy in the playoffs. And uh, so far, ranked number 16 in the early season power rankings. Absolutely. And we'll move on up the list past uh, Rise and Fall. He, and uh, we'll see a couple other AA graduates there. You see Tezzy at 13, Goldfinger at 14, and another rookie. We have plenty of rookies uh, to talk about uh, in Ricks, who, if I'm not mistaken, is going to be playing in the New Guys Tourney uh, Finals. Yeah, Rick's just making that new guys tourney final against, I believe, BBLC. So we're excited to see that. And three newcomers to the AAA entirely here in ranks 13, 14, and 15. Tezzy and Goldfinger, like you said, coming up from the AA. So it's going to be exciting here watching this pack and uh, seeing how they develop. I think all three of them have the potential to win a lot of games here. It all just depends on how the runs go. So moving on past Tezzy there, up into 12, 11, and 10 where we've got M. Bennings, BBLC, both rookies. Like I said, plenty of rookies. And a returning member cracking the top 10 there, the Wolfie Lions, uh, looking for a big season out of them. Yeah, absolutely. Wolfie Lion had a huge upset, or a couple of huge upsets, getting to the quarterfinals as, I believe, the 12th seed last season. So appropriately ranked here at number 10. He's done nothing but work hard and, and try to improve his game. So I think going forward into AAA, watch out for the Wolfie Lions. Like you said, we got more newcomers here again, BBLC and M. Bennings. It's going to be interesting to see where they fall. They've played in a couple other leagues. They've been around the Super Mega Baseball community. Definitely experienced players, but they really got to show what they've got here in the XBL AAA. Yeah, B BBLC uh, also in that new guy's tourney. And yeah, like you said, the, the Wolfie Lions playoff uh, run last year was actually quite good. Uh, if, if you were watching some of his games, making it all the way to the corner finals from a, from a lower seed, it was really fun to see. And I, I can't wait to see, you know, what, what happens here out of that preseason rank 10 spot. And we'll move on into the top nine where we've got blue Panther, Phil, and this is Eduardo three veterans of this triple a, and, uh, it looks like a new logo there for Phil Eduardo there at seven. What do you think about these three? Yeah, Eduardo moving his Omaha Sirloins to Kansas City this season. Going to be interesting to see. I think he was right, ranked right around here going into XBL Season 9. So, again, at number 7, we're going to be looking at him to have more regular season success, I think, than he had last season. Um, he's really, really one of those players that's a top-tier pitcher, and I think that can carry him. We'll see where those wins go. Like you said, Phil, with the logo reveal right here, he's got to catch them all. We'll see how many Ws he manages to catch. Appropriately ranked, I think, at number 8. Um, and then we have... Blue Panther with a new design as well with the Foxes. Had a pretty yeah. good season, definitely. Um, I remember Blue Panther saying they regretted their team build a little bit. So building around something completely new after, you know, introducing that roster tool that really helps you put your team together, I think Panther's going to be ready for this go-around. Yeah, shout out that roster tool, by the way. Cannot recommend it enough for anyone who is, is struggling on that side of things. We'll move into the top six here in the AAA Look at Oxbox all the way up there, tied for fifth with his holograms, looking to have a big season. McDonough, a rookie, makes his way into that tie in the top five. And another rookie, Judas Goat, has looked excellent so far uh, on, well, he looked great on 80 Ego, but he's also looked great on 83. Yeah, especially here at ranks four and five. Uh, I, you got to say these two are real heavy hitters that they've shown early on in their careers. Once the games start to count, we're all going to have eyes on them to see if they're able to continue a lot of that success or Judasco and McDonough are both a couple of competitors, uh, and I think ranked highly because of what they've shown early on in the offseason. And yeah, Ox, the you know, a model of improvement. He works, works, works. It's scrimming literally day and night. And, you know, the rank, I think, shows that. We're going to see how he does going forward this season. Yeah, I, I don't think there is anyone who scrims half as much as Oxbox. He loves practicing. He wants to improve. And uh, preseason, he is ranked in that top five, tied for a spot with McDonough. Which takes us into the cream of the crop. These are the favorites uh, preseason to win. Rainy Phillies and Wishbone Rules, new league office member, uh, along with myself. What do you think of this top three? It's pretty strong. I think this is one of the strongest top threes throughout, I think, in the, the uh, AAA's history as far as who might win it. Because it, you really could pull a name out of a hat and I wouldn't be surprised. But it's all going to come down to a lot of regular season success. And then, you know, how they get through those playoff runs. All three of these players have the potential to win. All three of them have good bats. All three of them can pitch. Uh, Rainey, you know, a heavy, heavy Von Aysen favorite, especially after last season getting that Von Aysen. Um, and then, but Wishbone can 
do, do just as well. And Philly's Rock showed in the playoffs that he was ready to compete. So this top three, really appropriate. Yeah, Phillies Rock, uh, one game away from participating in the Season 9 World Series, just fell short to Pizza Volcano. It was a fantastic series. If if you guys were not around for that, go check out the VODs on the, on our YouTube channel. That series was miraculous. So those are your uh, AAA power rankings. And we will move on to the final league, which is the 90 Ego XBL, where we have 20 players. And uh, just a fantastic field. Can't wait to go over each name. And here at the bottom, two veterans of the league, league office member Cardiac Card and Jay Boops. They're 20 and 19. Yeah, a couple of guys who had quiet off seasons. It's going to be interesting to see if they're able to cobble together a few wins early and, and you know climb out of these low ranks. But so far, they haven't shown much to uh, really separate themselves from the pack and, and show that they're going to be making a big jump. But like you said, big veterans and anything can happen. Jay Boops and Cardiac both, you know, been in World Series paths. Like we said, this thing's been running for 10 seasons, a lot of history here. And just because these guys are at the bottom now doesn't mean they can't come back swinging. And we'll move on past that bottom there. Worth noting as we get into this list here, 20 XBL teams means that assuming uh, there's no unfortunate circumstances where someone leaves midseason, uh, we are going to have a playoff expansion to 14 teams. So 14 teams will make the playoffs and six will not. So uh, with that being said, no name making his return to the XBL. Uh, he was a veteran in the past, uh, did a couple seasons in the AAA and uh, got the call uh, as there was kind of a, a a draw between population sizes of the XBL and the AAA. No name gets the call there and uh, does so and an intriguing rookie at, uh, in Webb there tied for 15th. Yeah, Webb tied for 15th. You can see he's going to be an extremely offensive threat. I think if that holds up throughout the season, that Webb is going to be a, you know a lot closer to a playoff position than 15. But right now ranked pretty appropriately because the, the pack is so tight as you'll see as we go through the middle. Doso at rank 17 and No Name at 18. Both a couple of pitching first guys. You could definitely call uh, No Name speed first. Like you said, he's making his return back to the XBL. He's played with us in seasons five and seven in the past. So coming back for season 10, ready to bring some French Canadian flair to the XBL again. And uh, we're excited to see it. Doso in North Jersey as well. Like I just said, an expert pitcher and, and look for him to really make some noise too, getting closer to those playoff spots. So moving on, as you can see, Webb was tied for 15th, and he is tied for 15th with Finite Provision, League Office member, Hall of Famer, returning with his Joplin Miners there, and uh, two rookies. We, we have a pretty big rookie class at XBL, the much bigger than last season. Corruptions, Jam Paladin there. Uh, you can see Jam tied for 12th. Yeah, and you can see nice and snug, and rank 14 Corruptions, it says Season 9 results 29-3, and three, the champion of the AAA. What it doesn't have for Jam Paladin is his Season 8 results. He was also the champion of the AAA, opted out of Season 9, coming back for Season 10. So right here at ranks tied for 12th and 14th, we have Jam and Corruptions, our AAA champions, and it's two-season history. Going to be really, really exciting to see how those two do um, now that we have champions involved in the in the rookie class in the XBL. And there's Finite, you know, former World Series champion, hanging out at number 15. He just missed the playoffs last season, and yeah. I think he's going to be ready to bounce back Joplin. Is, is doesn't take too kindly to miss in those playoffs, and, and they're ready, I think. Yeah, that's that's the big thing to remember about this particular Season 10 field. Even down here on the list, I mean, these players are nasty. It, the competition is going to be electric uh, as, we, as we all compete for these playoff spots here in what's going to be such a fun season. Can't wait. We'll move on up the list here past Jam Paladin. Where B. Hagen is awaiting. He is in, going into his second season in the XBL after spending season eight in the AAA. Ted Danson, of course, returning member. He is sitting in a tie with No Hummus, who is playing in his 10th season. I believe Finite is as well. They're both the, the only two players to play in every season. Is that right? No, that is incorrect. Hummus is the only player, okay. along with Cardiac gotcha. Card, to play in all 10 seasons That's of right. the XBL. Finite uh, skipped a season somewhere in the middle. I think it was five or six, but either way. Hummus and Cardiac Card getting the distinction this season of completing, you know, as, as long as everything goes as planned, their 10th season. And we're all really looking forward to that. Uh, that's just a huge thing for the history of this league to have guys uh, with longevity like that. So appropriately ranked, tied for number 10 in his 10th season. We have no Hummus. Made the playoffs last year after finishing last in season eight. So the, the rising action continues, I think, yeah. for no Hummus in the Stags. Right there, tied with Ted Danson, who's, you know, 
a super mega baseball veteran. If you haven't heard of Ted Danson, look him up. He's absolutely one of the best. And there's B. Hagen right there tied at number 12. Like you said, he had a really great rookie season in the XBL, probably one of the better second halves we've we've yeah. seen from a player who was not expected to go as far as, as he did, and he had a good showing. Absolutely. No question about it. We'll move on into the top nine after we had that tie there. Kekayula actually getting into that top nine. He is another one of the rookies. He finished, of course, in the, uh, the semifinals in what I'm sure was miserable fashion. Uh, corruptions pulling off one of just the most incredible comebacks you'll, you will ever see in Super Mega Baseball. And then Flash, he's going to be returning here in uh, season in, here in season ten. The commissioner, one of the commissioners of the league, after taking a couple seasons off, and then yourself, Dwayne, the other uh, co-commissioner of the league, there at rank seven. Yeah, interesting pack here. Keck is going to be making a lot of noise. I think you know rank nine appropriate for now, but Keck has always seemed to be the type of player that can play at any ego as long as you give him enough practice. So he's going to get comfortable with the XBL and he's going to make some noise. And at seven and eight, we have myself and Flash. I mean, as tight as it comes. Between us, I know our, our series is going to be anticipated between a lot of people uh, going forward this season. But either way, I'm excited to just be up there. And I think Flash is going to make some noise coming back off of that World Series win it, way back in Season 7. You know he's got some rust to shake off and maybe some some doubters to prove wrong. It'll it'll be really exciting to see what the Flash tends have. Yeah, also worth mentioning, both Flash and Cardiac uh, will be on delayed starts to their season. So when we do these power rankings next week or uh, whenever the, the roundup returns, they will be omitted from the list uh, until they jump back into the league. But for preseason, we wanted to have them. We had, wanted to have the full field represented. We'll move on into the top six, where we've got the, uh, the, the favorite, obviously, here for the rankings for Rookie of the Year, GTM SNBA13, there with his Team Liquid logo, the reigning Rookie of the Year, Luke Archer, and then myself uh, there at rank four. Yeah, very, very nice looking four, five, and six. I think the three of you guys will definitely shuffle out in, in any sort of order here, but it's going to be as strong as it comes. All four or all three of you guys are going to be fighting for that that final top four spot, if not a top three spot uh, going forward, depending on how things go for the guys above you. So this is a really interesting pack here. GTM, like you said, a big favorite early on for Rookie of the Year. We, we haven't seen anybody come out uh, that's new that's looked quite as powerful as that in a while and besides luke last season so yeah this should be exciting so that takes us to the top three which is gonna look quite different than it has the last two seasons because of course the two-time back-to-back reigning champion lazy has decided to step away for season 10 future unclear for him but that opens the door certainly for these guys uh astronauts coupon light snack and mike the cooch yeah, this is a. They're pretty familiar with you know being up in the top four, but like you said, there's no lazy there in the way to bump them on down one more spot. So here's our top three, and it's gonna be it's gonna be rough for all three of these guys. I think you know trying to to jog over each other all season long. It's gonna be interesting with the new rules, how that affects everybody's team builds, and and yeah, it's just Ashnod clearly you know with his power, a big favorite maybe for finishing out number one. But Fleur Bell and Mike are the two people that will give him the biggest run for his money. I can guarantee you that. Absolutely. And so that completes the preseason power rankings for all three leagues. And for our next segment, uh, unfortunately, fellow caster, Mike the Cooch, could not join us tonight uh, to, to help us with this next segment, but he did leave some bold statements for us in a new segment we've, we've got called uh, Cooch's Hot Potato Takes. So just some, some hot takes to rattle off here for you. Uh, Dwayne, why don't you start with a couple? First things first, we got Mike listing out the Jim Paladin will win the XBL Von Aston Award. Maybe not something that's too far off from the possibility of you know of being a reality. You know, Jam's definitely a stalwart pitcher, but that's definitely a hot one. And then the next one he follows us up with there. Another pitching take is that Cougar will improve his pitching stats from double A season nine, where he managed a Von Aston Award. So that's gonna be hard to top, but Mike out here saying he's gonna do it. Yeah, worth noting that so just just to kind of explain exactly why that Cougar one is is a hot take, he has downgraded his pitching actually to two bar starting rotation, two bar bullpen. So, but uh, you know, Cooch gambling here on this hot take that he's actually going to improve. Uh, he, he and honestly, I I kind of agree. He is he is that good. So we'll, we'll kind of, we'll see we'll see what happens with the field in Double A this year. He also believes that Phil will play in the Triple A World Series. 
He also believes that four out of the five XBL rookies finish in the top half of the table. Yeah, those are a couple of bold ones, I think, but maybe not too far out of the realm of reality. Again, like I said, Mike did a good job basing his takes, uh, especially, I think, with the four out of five and the rookies. That's going to be really, really, really interesting to watch going forward. And Phil playing in the AAA World Series is something I think we would all love to see. He's got the guts. Maybe he'll, you know, those auditors or uh, now the Pokemon trainers will, will make it happen. That's going to be exciting. Uh, and following up those two, we have uh, Dwayne will finish in the top four. Uh, I did not write that. Uh, it was not my <laughs> idea. Um, but I do condone it, and I'm going to I'm gonna roll with it. And Flash and Luke will disconnect less than five, count them five total times combined. I think that might be yeah. the hottest take on this list. I, I was just going to say, I think that is the most scalding hot take on the whole list. We shall see. Hopefully, hopefully he's right. Yeah, and then the final then, one we have yeah. there is his away pants are gray. I think that's a shout out right there to Luke Archer. Yeah, Mike taking a very firm stance on his pants there. So that that's a that's a bit of a war that's going to need to be fought over the course of the season. The color of his pants. So those are Cooch's hot potato takes. We will certainly remember some of these and clown on him. It should he be wrong on the majority of them uh, at come the end of the season. So thank you to Mike for leaving those with us. Yeah, absolutely. All right, moving. Yeah, moving on. Uh, we asked everyone uh, to fill out the survey uh, for predictions for season ten. We didn't get everyone to return a vote, but we did get a good return so we'll go over some of the results and we'll start with double a according to double a players they believe the von asen will be snowbird the long ballo uh, vote was actually split between snowbird uh, as well as uh, cougar and then the rookie of the year uh, another uh, another vote for snowbird definitely seeing some snowbird love here and then the double a world series champ the double a players believe it will be diesel yeah interesting turnout there as far as the voters go and who they voted for, you know, like we just said, Mike, going with that hot take, maybe Cougars 2-2 two, two pitching, uh, causing a little bit of falling out of favor there with the Von Ace and favoritism. But it will be interesting to see this going forward. I think these are pretty appropriate calls. So we have the same predictions for AAA. The, the voting sample size was a little bigger for sure. The Von Ace and probably no question here. The vote overwhelmingly sl swung uh, towards Rainey. Uh, worth mentioning, Judas Goat, Zlatanimal, and Wishbone Rules all got one vote in, in the Von Asen, uh voting there for the prediction contest. The Long Ballo uh, Award prediction goes to Phillies Rock. There was quite a few votes. Judas Goat got a couple. Rainy, Eduardo, Wishbone, and BBLC, they each all got one as well. Uh, AAA Rookie of the Year overwhelmingly seems to favor Judas Goat. Uh, Tezzy did get three votes, so shout out Tezzy. And then in the the vote uh, to see who would who th people think is going to win the World Series was actually the most split vote maybe on the entire questionnaire. Three votes for Phillies, three for Rainey, a couple for Judas Goat. Someone picked Eduardo as well as Tezzy and Phil. Wow, yeah, that is definitely split vote. And as you can see there, Rainey and Phillies Rock receiving the highest percentages. But Triple A's field is as far wide open as it's as it's been in its three season history. I think this will be really exciting. And something I've gathered from what you just told us and about those totals is that Judas Goat. Definitely looking good. We we are, will definitely have some eyes on him. Yeah. A big rookie of the year favorite, and even getting long ball on Von Asen uh, votes. That means we got we might have a pretty complete player on our hands. Yeah, no doubt. So now we have the XBL survey results, and we had a pretty. This was the healthiest turnout as far as getting the votes in was. The XBL Von Asen was a huge split, but ultimately Doso got the most votes. Uh, I myself had a few. Mike had a couple. You had a couple, Dwayne. Jam had a couple. And even a vote for Kekayula. Pretty good field there uh, as far as competition goes for the Von Asen. Uh, the Long Ballo Award overwhelmingly went to Ashnod's coupon. It wasn't unanimous, though. There was uh, some believers in Light Snack, of course. Excellent hitter. And then for Rookie of the Year, it was a perfect split. Uh, six votes each for Jam Paladin and GTM. Uh, one vote for Webb, one for, for Keck as well. But really the vote going between Jam and GTM. And then, of course, for the World Series, eight, eight votes for Ashnod's coupon and then three each for Light Snack and Mike the Cooch. So people certainly favoring Ashnod, but uh, not unanimously. Yeah, still some believers out there that someone might be able to stop Ashnod from achieving that first title. He lost back-to-back -to, -back to Lazy, so you know he's going to be hungry to go out and get it. Uh, but yeah, interesting turnout in these votes. Like you said, the largest turnout. 
And I think they are all really, really good calls. You know, Doso been dominant for a couple seasons now. Ash not going to keep doing what he's doing. And GTM and Jam Paladin both showing uh, a lot of people in the offseason scrimmages that they're going to be tough, tough opponents. Yeah, so we'll check on these predictions when it comes time to hand out those awards in a couple months uh, at the conclusion of Season 10. That's going to bring us to the last little bit of our show here. Uh, we would like to announce opening day for you guys. Uh, obviously, we've already picked the date out and told you guys it will be this Sunday night. I believe that's June 13th. We have three matches for you uh, starting at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. The Mountain View Melonheads, that is Webb, will take on No Hummus and the Florida Stags. That's the second opening day nod in a row for No Hummus. We have a AAA matchup between who we ranked as number one and number two. That's Phillies Rock and Rainey. That's going to be at 7.30 Eastern. And then uh, the, in prime time there, 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Pacific, no name, marks his return to the XBL with a, a fight with one of the most resilient players in the entire league, Doso looking to make his mark and uh that all starts like i said a sunday night yeah really exciting matches here the triple header traditional xbl triple header to start things off for you on opening day so get hyped for those games starting at 6 p.m sunday evening eastern time 3 p.m pacific it's definitely going to be great i think all three of them um are really really good sets uh mississippi moons and yellow pins especially another tradition we had last season the, the big number one and number two favorite faced off in that uh that first triple a game and they're going to go at it again here this sunday so you know hang out for all the sets stop by for whatever you can it's it's going to be really really good so the last thing we have to reveal for you guys is who your partners are so if you're new and you, you don't know exactly how it works if you if you opted in to match of the week and opted in to play on a, a you know a sunday night match of the week you get a predetermined partner for that match of the week you cannot play that player until uh, you are called upon for your match of the week. So you need to reserve that matchup. Make sure you don't play it ahead of time. Schedule with other people uh, until it is your time to play in a casted primetime match. So let's reveal those matchups here. And I'll just need one moment for it to, uh, I guess you could say, pixelate on my end here. Sorry, you can go ahead and start reading them, Dwayne. Sorry, my bad. That's no problem. We got Triple A match of the week here on the left. Like we said, starting things off, Phillies Rock versus Rainey. Then the next matchup we have there is McDonut versus This Is Eduardo. Following that matchup, we will have Wishbone Rules versus Wolfie Lion. Following that, Rise and Fall 83 versus Oxbox 1991S. And then we have M. Bennings versus Goldfinger. Tezzy Do It All 420 versus Tam Danance. Ricks and BBLC, who are actually playing right now, or not right now, but they are scheduled to play soon That's in right, the guys' yeah. tourney final. So that that was not a uh, on purpose. So great coincidence there. Yeah. And Joe BJ versus Blue Panther down at the tail end there. So good looking matches for AAA. And, uh, Absolutely. And then on yeah, the XBL side, we have our two matches starting off on opening day that we've already read: No Hummus and Web, Doso and Just No Name. Then Weaver and Light Snack. That's going to be a good one coming up in the early weeks. Finite and B. Hagen. Following Finite and B. Hagen, we will have GTM versus Luke Archer. That's going to be big between the Rookie of the Year favorite and former Rookie of the Year. Mike the Cooch versus Ashnod's Coupon. That's our heavy hitter of the season. And we've got Webb and Corruptions. A new guy versus the AAA champion, which will be interesting. Jam Paladin versus Kekaiula. And then rounding things out, we will have The Flash versus myself in the Battle of Commissioners. And you know there's some dollars on the line there. If you haven't heard, go check the pinned messages in general. Some absolute bangers on this list. Just, oh, ugh, I cannot wait for all of these, honestly. Uh, and, and also worth noting, uh, everybody, especially if you're new, uh, this is in a rough order, but basically every season there has been times where we've had to sh kind of shuffle it uh, to make accommodations. So uh, expect... To, uh, I would say plan on this in the order that it goes, but don't be surprised when things do have to get switched up a little bit. Uh, so you may be moved up, you may be pushed back, but in any case, just make sure you reserve this player uh, that you are paired with until it is prime time. So uh, thank you all, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us for this weekly roundup preseason edition, season 10. Uh, that is the end of our show tonight. We're so happy that you could all uh, spend your Friday night here with us. And uh, Dwayne, any parting words? Thank you, Weaver, for uh, joining me here tonight. This was definitely a great show to put on. Glad to give you guys some content to chew on before things kick off on Sunday. And yeah, just thank you all for joining us tonight. 
get hyped. This is the 10th season. We've been doing this thing for three years, June of 2018, June of 2021. Here we are, season 10. Just just keep the ball rolling. Let's just keep the hype going. I, I can't be more excited. I know you guys yeah. are as excited as I am. So, yeah. With that said, everybody have a safe and pleasant evening. Thank you for joining us. And, and uh, just peace out. We will see you Sunday night, everyone. Thank you so much.